Good morning and welcome back to day 10 of the bathroom build. En suite, bathroom build I might add. Uh, so here we are, I'll do a quick scan man. Many things, doorway, wall, bath plan, box of stuff, stuff on wall, stuff on wall. There's lots of stuff that's happened. There's 10 days worth you might have got by the fact this day 10. Um, but today's exciting. Today's when you know you kind of get onto site days or whatever you do as a job and you kind of go, now, wouldn't it be nice if I had this, 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 and this done? And you go, there's no real way of getting it done, but there's also a possibility of possibly getting it done. So today, my plan is thus. Plasterboard this wall all the way through. Plaster this wall all the way through. That part is doable. Inside this box, I have many little tricks, but in here, I've got the shower pump. So I'd like to get that fit around the corner. Gonna be quick and easy to fit from this side, I hope. So that shouldn't be too difficult. The other thing I like to do is <coughs> lights. I have many lights now, many. So obviously I did the wiring yesterday. So that's ready to rock and roll. So if I can get that in, I've got myself my one and a half mil cable, which will be the one for the switch for across the roof line, back in and drop it down. So this one sat there is for this room. And then the second line I'm gonna run will be for the spots, the down lights. So that's ready to go. I've pretty much got everything ready to go to do what I wanna to do today. But can I do it? Do you believe in me? Will I hit some obstacles? Is it gonna be a total nut of bull's egg? Possibly yes on all counts, but we'll see what we get up to. So right, I'm gonna go get some plasterboard, get this bad boy measured. Now, top tip, so somebody back in day two, three, I don't know what day, it's early doors, right? And I say, look, you measure off and you make sure that you've got like 400 dead centers so that every time you put like a board on, you know you've got fixings. And he's right, I did make a cock up. So I did my 400 centers perfectly, but I did it from the M1 to that one to that one. But what I forgot, the again, seven month old waking up three times a night, when I measure off this wall to 400, it's gonna sit slightly short because I didn't do it right. But it doesn't really matter because this wall is such a stumpy baby little wall. It's 1.8-ish, I think it will take. I'm gonna lay my board that way. And then put one on top of that one and go that direction. So it makes Zero problem for me because the wall is not more than 2.4 meters, which is what the length of board would be. So there you go. Whew, ah, yeah, I like it. Right, I'm gonna get off and start cutting some plasterboard. Off to a flying start. So there you go. One board is cut and ready to put in. So as you can see, I've cut out around my lovely platform. But now you can see what I mean yesterday at the end of the video when I said, I'm not gonna put the plasterboard onto this floor because if I ever need to pull this up, if it's buried underneath a plaster wall, it's gonna make life a bit more difficult. So make it simple, job done. You can now see what I said in like videos, videos back again. By making sure everything is level and putting these on the same point, all I've now done is mark straight off the level on all the uh, studs. As you can see, this one goes through it. Now I know exactly where I can sort of sink my screws, screw in, and I know I'm gonna hit stud. Easy peasy, makes it 10 times faster. This one is now cut. I just got to get the rough bit off the top with my special little plasterboard rasper. Once this one's screwed in, that one goes straight on top. And that's that wall basically plasterboarded. Knocking it out of the park so far. We'll see how we get on. Boom. Last bit of plasterboard done. Scrim tape put on all the joints. You can just see it there. So what that does is, between all the joints, it will never allow it to crack. That'll basically keep it all nice and tight. Job done, happy days. Plastering gear is now out, so I've now cleaned up all my trowels again, <clears throat> sand them all back so they're nice and done. Plastering drop to, so drop the plaster on while I'm knocking it. And once it's knocked, keep it off there. Plastering bucket, big knocker, rough up, spinning, spinning with shimmy. That's a technical terminology, you can quote me on that if you like. Uh, and a bag of multi-finish. So yeah, and obviously some spare water. So I basically just put in, I don't need tons, so just a teeny bit in the bottom as you can see, so you can probably see that better now. <clears throat> I'll drop in half a bag and just keep adding water to it so I get to the right consistency of creamy goodness. And then yeah, I'll start splatting it on and cracking on with it. So while I'm in the middle of doing that, while I'm working that wall, I'll then start, I'll maybe put a pump in or doing some cuts and putting some lights in. I haven't decided yet, I'm sort of winging it for the day, I quite like it. But yeah, that's my next plan. So, here we go. Skin part one, done. So that's just like the scratch coat gone on, which basically means you just push it onto the surface to make sure it's here nicely. Get it all on there with a little trowel, little baby one, where is he? Here it is. Which is very nice. 
and then move on to the wider one. So when you use the wider one, it kind of joins up any imperfections that might be across the whole thing. Go in loads of different directions to make sure you kind of like obliterate any sort of dips and all those kind of bits and pieces really. And then the trick is, let it start to set. Let it do its thing. You can't keep working it because it's just wasting your time. Let it do what it's gonna do. You'll know, Unagi, my friends, people, when it's ready. And then you give it another lick over. Now it starts to set a bit more. Sprinkle a bit of water on it, give it a bit of play, and then just go over it again to finish it. <coughs> and it's nice, you know, plastering new plasterboard is by far and away the easiest thing to do compared to, say, plastering an actual old wall, which is kind of loads of imperfections and all that kind of stuff, yeah. This is a piece of cake, it draws in it a nice space because obviously the plasterboard is porous, makes a nice bond, and it's beautiful, basically. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna have a look at the plumbing on the shower, I start having a quick pop with that. Yes, I made a decision. So, I'll be back in a second, and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm back again. Now, here we go. Pump is now in situ. You can see hot and cold feed, beautifully connected. And what we're gonna do now, what I've been doing, is I've connected this to the outlet pipe, just so I can make sure that all the air is bled out of the system. Hugely important that you do this, can't stress that enough. Uh, but once you do, I don't know where to put this, give me put it down here for a second. And I'll open up the valve. Right. Isolate your valve, turn it on. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful flow of hot, hot, gushing water. Yeah, so it's taken me about five minutes to get the flow going because it's just because air logs and stuff like that. You just need to really make sure you bleed it perfectly. Don't piss around with this bit. Look at that. Stonky. So, that is the hot side. I'll turn it off. So, I'm now satisfied with that. Another top tip is always make sure that, you know, the feeds are coming down straight into it. There's no bends or kinks. That is hugely important. Additionally, making sure that your hot water cylinder temperature is set to the right temperature, okay? So for this Salamander one, CT Force, I love these pumps. They're fantastic, all brass fittings. As you can see, lovely, well-built stuff. Um, the temperature is 65 degrees. To be fair, I always knock it down from there, so I think I've set this one to about 60 degrees, just down to sort of 59-ish, 60 just so it's not working as maximum heat. And also, if it's like 65, that's pretty bloody hot, it's too hot. So yeah, about the 60 mark, job done, but always check the manufacturer's instructions when you do it. Uh, so that is that. The cold side is absolutely diamond as well. I turn it on just so you can see it. That's a good flow. So, there you have it. Both hot and cold sides are now completely bled, which is amazing. So now what I'll do is take off my temporary pipe work and then connect it up to the verticals uh, for the feeds, for the shower and the bath. And then that is the pump in and ready and sort of primed. So amaze balls. Uh, what I had to do was, in order to make sure I'm satisfied that the pipes were running perfectly vertically, was extend this bit of bridge here. Because actually the pump was just over here. It was bending and twisting the... Um, the flexes, which I wasn't happy about. So yeah, so now it's all straightened up. Perfect, right. I'll connect these up to the mains part and then uh, I do believe that it's lunchtime. But the other thing that you haven't been seeing <coughs> is <coughs> we're basically there on the plastic. Just a final lick over, just for a few tiny imperfections, but very nice. You, the shadows that you can see is just where it's wet in certain places and stuff, but basically beautiful. So I'll give that another, I'll cut it up, give this a lick over with another one swallow over. That's that done. Clean up all the plaster and stuff because always clean it out, people. Don't leave it to tomorrow. It's hard as nails. And then once I've done that and that, I will then start connecting up some lights. Boom! On target. I don't know if I get them all done, but the fact I'm starting them will make me very happy. So, chuffy. Right, so, so dangly thing. Right, nice, isn't it? Beautiful. Lovely quality connection up there, which is nice. So, I'll see it goes into there, connects up. Now, how did I get to that stage? Well, it's simple, isn't it though? So look, you can see when I kind of poke it through like this, the very rock and roll. So what I'll do is snip to the centre, like that, which then brings you to this, just a cut end. The next part you do is split it like that. So it's all ready to rock and roll. You then take these grey bits off and trim it. So it then looks like this one, like that, all separate. But wait, it's not ready to connect. What you do after that one, is then trim off the ends to the length that you require to go into the housing, into the quick fit inside there. Once you've done that, 
you then put on your earth sheath, which you buy separate, which comes in lovely packs depending on where you get it from. I've just got a little pack there. Don't forget to put the earth sheath on, just do it, all right? And that is now ready, and that is how we're going to connect into the block for the light. Yeah. Took me a minute to settle it up. I'd be appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I bloody think ta-da is in order, because, <coughs> well, as you can see, <coughs> it's drying off now, because it's beautiful. Plastering done. Shower, fit. And lights, fit. All right, 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 fine, they're split ends. They're not connected at that other end, but they're in, right? So there's now eight of them in the roof, one under the unit, ready to light that. That is not bad going. I know it was a bit of a challenge this morning, but no, I took it on and uh, I knocked it out of the park, which is brilliant. So there you go. So I will now be back on Monday. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all those bits and pieces that you need to do at your end to get more top tips and stuff like that. So anything else, drop us a comment. Have a nice weekend.